What to expect in Pala Casino 400 Auto Club Speedway. We go over the opening odds for this Sunday's Pala Casino 400 at Auto Club Speedway. The second race of the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season will take place in Fontana, California. The season is now officially underway, and on Sunday, February 26th, the Auto Club Speedway hosts the 2023 Pala Casino 400. The race will be broadcast on Fox, and the green flag will fly at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So, let's check what to expect in the Pala Casino 400 at Auto Club Speedway. Hello, NASCAR fam, and welcome back to NASCAR Live. Before we begin, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. And let's begin. We begin this week's projections by remembering some of the memorable events that have occurred at Auto Club Speedway, where this will be the final race on the two-mile circuit before it undergoes renovations. At Auto Club, two-time winners Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch each had their first NASCAR Cup Series victories. Johnson's came in 2002 and Busch's in 2005. The first race of the Premier Series was won in 1997 by four-time champion Jeff Gordon. The expansive, well-used racing track encourages multiple groove tactics and lots of pit road stops for new tires. Bush leads the active drivers with a series-high four victories, followed by Kyle Larson with two, and each of Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Martin Truex Jr., and Alex Bowman with one. The odds of bet MGM started with Larson, the defending champion of this event, as the favorite. It's only fitting that the track that served as NASCAR's link to Hollywood for so long, until moving racing into the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum last year, that is, was the scene of so many movie-worthy events in just 25 years of competition. Naturally, the California kid Jeff Gordon won the first race at Auto Club Speedway in 1997. It was his seventh victory in as few as the 15th of the season, and it helped him win his second title and have his second best season ever. Four years later, almost like it was crafted in a smoky writer's room 50 miles west in Los Angeles proper, Rusty Wallace held Gordon off on the final lap to pick up his only win of the year and second-to-last win of his career, just two months after the demise of Dale Earnhardt and the 2001 Daytona 500. A standing ovation was given as Wallace, a close friend of the Intimidator, completed his victory lap while holding a black, white, and red number 3 flag out of his window. It was April 29th, which would have been Earnhardt's 50th birthday. A year later, Gordon's fellow Californian and teammate picked up his first NASCAR Cup Series victory of his career. As it turned out, there were a lot more victories to come. As we look back on it now, some 20 years later, Jimmy Johnson dove into the team's arms like Superman. Auto Club is just different as we'd come to realize. For some reason, huge things always seem to happen there, and it's proven to have a tendency for being the site of historic victories. Johnson later passed Earnhardt on the list of Cup victories all-time at the track in 2016, on his way to winning his seventh championship. It also served as the scene of Kyle Busch's maiden Cup victory, which he did at the age of 20 years, 125 days, breaking the previous record for the youngest series winner ever. Later, he tied Richard Petty's record by winning the 200th race, tying the record. It also has a history of controversy. This year marks the 10th anniversary of one of NASCAR's most dramatic finishes, which was followed by one of its most infamous crashes caused by a barrage of late race collisions between current and former teammates Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, and Tony Stewart. There was blocking, slide jobs, shoving, tossing water bottles, and yeah, you better believe there were sound bites. Remember that this circuit has hosted 32 Cup Series races in all, and even that is in a full list of everything that's occurred there. In 2017, as we remember 20 years of competition on the two-mile oval, Auto Club Speedway was honored for all of its rich heritage. It's time to look to the future now that racing in the LA market has reached its turning point after 25 years. The final race on the two-mile Auto Club track will be Sunday's Pala Casino 400. Even with the most accelerated schedule, the proposed half-mile track won't be completed for the 2024 season. Planning still underway for the construction of a cutting-edge short track to be erected on the property, subject to approval. Dave Allen, the track's president, said last month, So, me, just to, to reiterate, reiterate your question here, if nobody heard it, but um, the plan is still to, to make our best efforts towards a half mile. Um, timeline is still yet to be determined. As, as we work through it this year, hopefully we'll have a lot of cool announcements and milestones that we need to hit. So, it just takes some time here to, uh, to make sure we get it right and build the most state-of-the-art short track that's ever been built. 
It uh, unfortunately in 24, you know, with even with the, the most aggressive timelines, we will not race in 24 um, on on the new track. So, you know, what that timeline is beyond that still has yet to be determined. You know, I, there's just there's just milestones and things that we need to to get through, and not least of which is the design of the racetrack. We're still working on that. There's been a lot of iterations of, of what we're designing, both on track and, and off track with the, with the new facility. And uh, it'll be really exciting to get to a point where we can, where we can share that, because uh, what we're working on is, uh, is, is really exciting. Uh, the fact that you know we race at a half mile at Martinsville and a half mile at Bristol, you know, it's it'd be cool to have another half mile, especially out here on the West Coast with uh, so much racing history here. So uh, we're looking forward to it, and looking forward to getting to a point where we can share that, that information and get, uh, get a little more excited about it. It definitely a momentum boost. I mean, the fact that we're that we are in downtown LA in in the number two DMA in the country, the number one market that NASCAR visits. There's a lot of race fans here. A lot of people forget that the racing history is is just immense here. Um, the fact that they were racing midgets here on this place at this place in the 40s. Um, the dirt tracks. I think at one point there were more racetracks here per capita than any other place in the world. Um, obviously, we've grown up a lot, and there's a lot of things to do around here in Southern California, but um, racing and motorsports is one of them. And uh, I think, you know, from the excitement that our company has and, and the, uh, um, the energy around what we're looking at doing in the next chapter of what Auto Club Speedway is, is a testament to the fact that we understand the importance of this market, not only to us as a company, as NASCAR, but also to the teams and the partners that are associated with the teams, the media partners. It's a very important market marketplace so um, you know change is hard sometimes but uh, I'm confident that this is going to be a change that uh, is exciting for everybody and is going to be a, a heck of an entertainment venue um, you know for us in the future. But in several ways, NASCAR has already entered a new generation, with last year's next-gen racer obviously ushering in a modified dynamic throughout the series. Bold schedule reshuffling like this year's Chicago Streets race and the pair of clash events at the Coliseum subjecting the sport to new markets and with the next generation of heroes ready to claim the crown from the old guard. Giving up a track layout that over the years has provided us with so many historical moments in the sport and worn out its surface in the ideal way is difficult. However, it's even more difficult to resist getting impatient about adding another short track to the calendar on the other coast, especially given how frequently NASCAR's dangerous decisions have proven to pay off in recent years. As Kyle Larson remarked at Daytona 500 Media Day, himself a former Fontana winner. Yeah, I just I talked to him just briefly over there, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's uh, it's definitely a long process for them to reconfigure not only the track, but I'm sure a lot of the facilities. So. Um, I think he said it's like 18 month or something project, so pretty, pretty intense. And I know with California and, and all the uh, the codes that you have to go through, it's it's hard to have everything probably stay on schedule. So um, I don't know. I think uh, I don't know exactly the extent of what they're doing with the track and how big it's going to be and the shape and banking and all that. But um, and I love the two mile track, but uh, I think the more short tracks we can have, the better off our sports will be. So need that they're investing that money to uh, to try and grow the grow you know racing in California but, but also help basketball. Auto Club Speedway drivers to keep an eye on Kyle Bush rank in points 22nd best result for the season 19th at Daytona and previously at Auto Club he won in 2005 2013 2014 and 2019. Bush had a strong showing in his first points race with Richard Childress Racing. In the Daytona 500, he performed admirably, leading laps and advancing to the front in the closing circuits until becoming caught up in a late race incident. His best track to date has been ACS. In the last five races, he has four eighth place results or better. Joey Logano, rank in points, first. Best result for the season, second place. Previously at Auto Club, there are no victories, but there are six finishes of seventh or better. At Daytona, Logano almost flawlessly navigated the draft, leading 12 laps and finishing in the thick of things up front in the final few. When the caution came out on the very last lap, he had a chance to win, but Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had already taken the lead. Christopher Bell, Rankin points fourth. Best result for the season, third place. Previously at Auto Club, two starters and two results that did not finish. Bell had a solid performance to complete 2022, and he had a strong start to 2023 at Daytona, finishing third and leading 20 laps. What happens in the first few weeks of the season for the number 20 team can be inferred from Auto Club.
Chris Buescher. Rankin points, second. Best result for the season, fourth place. Previously at Auto Club, the best result is twice finishing 16th in 2019 and 2020. In a combined drafting effort at Daytona, Busher and teammate Brad Keselowski led 74 laps. Will it still be going strong into race two? Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Rankin points, third. Best result for the season, first. Previously at Auto Club, best placing was fifth in 2016. By winning at Daytona, Stenhouse ended a winless skid of 199 races, the fourth longest in series history. His victory at ACS would make him the first driver since Matt Kenseth in 2009 to win the opening two events of the season. The outcome of Sunday's race will be the first indication of how much momentum a 500 victory might give one of the smaller teams in the series. Kyle Larson, Rankin Point 17th, best result for the season 18th, previously at Auto Club, three top two finishes in the previous five events. Late in the Daytona 500, Larson raced to the front but was involved in a crash, which cost him the victory. In 2016 and 2017, he was successful at Auto Club Speedway. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson exhales deeply after his first cup victory as he recalls happy Auto Club memories. 83 victories were achieved by Jimmy Johnson in the NASCAR Cup Series during the course of his career, thanks to his talent and good fortune. He still has many happy memories of his first, which occurred in his home state about 21 years ago, and the special celebration that accompanied it. At what was then known as California Speedway, the seven-time champion won his Maiden Cup Series race on April 28, 2002. The triumph served as much more than just a welcome back celebration for Johnson. It also served as evidence that Hendrick Motorsports and team co-owner Jeff Gordon were right in recognizing Johnson as a rising star in the number 48 Chevrolet following a mediocre Xfinity Series run. It gave Johnson a sense of stability that would last for another 20 years. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos.